My name's Sean Dunley. I am with uh, Wild Tech for almost 30 years now. I was a student here, I've been an instructor here, and today I'm currently the Vice President of Training on the campus. And I'm Eric Paul, so I've been here almost 20 years. I was an instructor for 15 of that through almost every program at Wild Tech. Uh, with the exception of trim, that's that's where you guys yeah. come in. <laughs> and I'm Mikey. I was a student here in 2009. I graduated with collision or finishing and street rod under my belt. And then I went out into the real world and decided that I wanted to come back and take a stab at trim and upholstery. So in 2013, I came back for trim and upholstery, graduated outstanding student and started a business with it. And I have been running ever since. Glad to run right back into you guys here today. Let's go ahead and we'll start walking. We're gonna go ahead and hit the Motorsports Chassis Fab awesome. department first. That feeling, Sean. Yes. I get that feeling, man. Back at school again. Well, you know, anytime you wanna come in, we can put you to work. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I tell you, being around this much work makes me want to. <laughs> Man, they're busy too. A lot of ambition yeah, in this so room. We're in phase two of two different phases. Okay. This class is three months long, like every other specialty program is. Um, phase one, they, they learn different things like different types of welds. Even though this is not a welding program, we still want to stick that metal together, so we have to teach those. Um, so they'll go through some welding, they'll go through some pipe fittings, some thick to thin different types of welding is what we call additional. And once they get through that, then they can move on to the project work. So the project work is pretty much everything you see here from building full chassis, taking a long bed Chevy and making a short bed, so narrowing, shortening the frame, um, doing other things such as roll cages, tubular frames, um, pedal grass, you name it, just whatever the student desires. That is so cool. And people from all kinds of different walks of life take classes like this, off-road, on-road, road course, all kinds of uh, applications for, for this knowledge. So depending on what the student wants to do, if they wanted to build, say, a drag chassis like you'll see hanging on the wall, yeah. we use sanctioning bodies such as NHRA or SCCA or any motorsports division. So they can actually be a certified, can you get it certified and everything? They can go to their local track That's and they awesome. can get them certified. But we use the same tubing, same wall thickness, anything that they regulate, whether it be pro molly or mild grade. So build it right by the certification yep. standards. That's awesome. Build it right by the book. Yep. That's cool. And Absolutely. where do these projects come from? Student they, owned mostly. They are, They're mostly yeah. student owned. Now if a student can't afford or doesn't have a project vehicle, we can supply things such as, well, the build us an engine stand right. or a cherry picker. Okay, stand. cool. We're really proud that we allow the students to do live work. And, yeah. and there's certain like criteria that. that they have to meet before they can bring it in. But yeah, we encourage the students, if you want something that specific that you'd like to bring in, we encourage that. That's awesome. You know, all they gotta do is make sure that they talk to the instructor, the instructors, and the coordinators, and make sure there's a plan. Yeah, and a safety you protocol. Start. You bet. You, you did bet. that though. Yeah. Up in a full street. Yeah, and now you know, like I have a YouTube channel called Paper to Pavement, and all of those paper drawings started in the classroom at Wyotech. So <laughs> yeah, it, it will eventually take you to pavement one of these days if you stay with it long enough. Absolutely. So some of the other projects we got going on, um, there's. Obviously, it's full tube chassis blazer. That's cool. Uh, Motorcycle back there. Yeah. Um, one of my favorites is this. Oh, okay. Wheel. This is set on a 2006 Dodge Ram chassis. Nice. That we stretched 12 feet. Now, is this a WyoTech? It is. This is a WyoTech truck? Yeah, so this truck will actually have a wedge bed on it and we'll haul our 32 Ramp Roadster truck. on it. Nice. Yep. That's awesome. So. We're running the Class A tires and wheels on it, and uh, still run the Dodge rear end and so on. But it's just going to be a, a cool little commuter to parade or hot rod hauler, dude. Showcase what we do. That is awesome. I love this. I'm building a school bus to do the same I job. See you know. Bus. Yep. There's not, uh, right now. You know, if you can get your work to places. That's where the opportunities really come, being able to haul your stuff. So I'm seeing all these guys that used to build early Fords doing a lot more stuff like this, ramp trucks and hot rod haulers. Mm -hmm. And on a Dodge chassis too, so you know it's gonna last forever. Oh yeah. My wife works at Cummins, so. Right on. Hey, 
<laughs> you picked right. You're, you, hey, that, that engine right there helped feed us. So exactly. I'm sure it'll help feed y'all. This is awesome. So we can venture What kind of wedge up. bed are you going to do? Are you going to do a diamond plate bed or are you just going to make something? So the decking will be diamond plate, but we're going to integrate a uh, full tubular exterior fill in between the tubes with metal and then it'll have toolboxes integrated into it for chains, tie down, stuff like that. I love it. Um, so it'll come down just below the back window about six inches and wedge out to about 18 inches off the ground in the back. Oh, that's so cool, man. And being able to get there and go, low. Yeah, it'll be on full air right here. Yeah. So you can actually lower the bed down to about eight inches off the ground so your ramps don't need to be very long. That's awesome. Yeah, then you, because mine, my bus, I'm carrying big ladders for ramps. You know, you guys, you're a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. That's awesome, dude. I love it. As you well know, it all comes down to the planning. And oh, yeah. Paper to pavement is Paper to pavement. Words. Yeah. I love it. So we have, you know, uh, CNC plasma tables. Uh, we still do a lot of CNC cutting, or uh, sorry, plasma cutting by hand. Uh, oxyacetylene, Megan TIG welding both. Unlike our street rod where we actually add in gas welding too. Really? Uh, that, I didn't know that. Yeah, so we do a lot of brazing over there. That's cool. Um, custom making panels, and we'll show you that when we yeah. get over there. But, yeah. um, I feel like I'm learning things too, this is cool. <laughs> So this is almost an identical replica of the other class. Um, so they're doing all the exact same competencies, additionals, and things like that. Oh, so you have two classes in here. Two classes. I didn't realize that. Okay. That. So what happened was it started out with A class, and the popularity of the class grew so much we ran out of space, so we started a whole other class. But are they on the same timeline, or are they on they a different... Are. So they are at the same week and everything? Well, that's cool. They're working in unison with one another. And then is it just different instructors per mm -hmm. class? Is that how it works? Yep. So breaking up instructors? That's yep. awesome. And because of the amount of time involved of training the students, you have to spend a lot of quality time with each student because every build project is different. You can't just say, well, here's a worksheet, and we'll come back and check on it. This is literally like you're helping them become fabricators. Yeah. So you got to help them with the layout. You're a hands-on mentor. Yes. So this tends to run a little bit lesser ratio than what some of the other programs I do. I got you. Because of the amount of more time you have to I got spend you. with each student. It really needs more hands-on. Exactly. Get this. That's good. Yeah. Well, and it's good you guys address that right from the start, too, instead of cramming and, you know, yes. and lacking. Are you seeing students come in and kind of get inspired and sculpt into more of the kind of cars they're into? Like, uh, I, I know like with this, I didn't even know cars like this existed before I went to school. You know, I thought dirt cars went in a circle and bashed into each other, you know, and ruined Monte Carlos is what I thought. Right. And then to see something like this, I was just kind of curious how many of the students come in with their own kind of aesthetic figured out versus the ones that sculpt. It's While really hard to put a number on that, per se, but yes, there's a lot of inspiration that happens while they're here. Sometimes it's something they never even thought of, or they had an idea of what they wanted to do, but they didn't know how to do it, and then they seen something they liked, and they're like, I want that. And it re-inspired the whole concept. I love that. Yes. I absolutely love that. And the cool thing about when a student brings a project in, if a student doesn't have a project, and another student's like, hey, I could use some assistance on this, this is something that you're interested in, it's an opportunity where that student can work as a team with another student, maybe, and who maybe knows a team what will come from who that. knows? Yeah, and who so. knows what can come from that too. I've worked after school with a lot of guys that I did projects in, in, in school. You know, if I have a show that I need to go to and I know I can call back on one of the guys that wore a red shirt beside me that always got jobs done when it was due, I call them and they show up. I, it's awesome, man. Yeah, like, yeah. WyoTech has helped me more than any other brand that I've ever been attached to. They're all coming here, honestly. We're, we have the same sickness. All the staff and faculty, this is a culture. When you start talking about your culture, we, we all have the same sickness. We love cars. We like, you know, whether it's going slow and enjoying the ride or going as fast as you can, we have that same sickness. You know, whether it's over the road trucking, whether it's off road, that's what WildTech's been about, is encouraging what, what do you want to learn? What do you like? What's your interest? And we can help that them build that dream on them, for them. Which is why WildTech was the perfect fit for a guy like me, you know, because I have a hard time going and listening to a guy with a name tag and a suit and tie tell me what to do. Yeah. And when I went to WildTech, 
I shook hands and worked alongside and sweat with the instructors that had the passion that I did, you know, and I believe that's what you'll get with Wyotech. Absolutely. I'm excited to see the class grow. Yeah, we are too. Yes. <laughs> this is awesome, dude. Man. And this is an instructor that actually came from California that has been building Baja trucks and things like this for 25 years. So, awesome. Um, I like this big, like... Man. So it's a 500 horse, 351. Oh, that's cool. Carbureted, uh, running through a transaxle. What kind of transaxle? Uh, Mendiola, I believe. Okay. Yep. That is a wild unit, man. Oh. Did that give you ideas for the bus? Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. Full Imagine off. having that school bus and being able to just ramp off the back of it. <laughs> that would be awesome. That'd be so cool. I love it. So we don't believe in doing anything small here. So this is the chassis for the 32 Ford Roadster we're building. Okay. It has a five and a quarter horse big block Ford in it and a quick change rear end. I like it. So traction will never be a thing. Um, I'm not even sure why we bought tires or tread on it because there won't be much anyway. <laughs> um, but it's just what we do. I love it. Now, is this going to be a, a, a three window, five window, Roadster? Roadster. Roadster, okay. Yep. Nice. Yep. You guys have the rendering done a bit somewhere? We actually got the students involved, and I've got 25 different renderings. So for it's a paint fluid schemes. project. Mm -hmm. I like that. But we wanted it to be the, the students' ideas. I like that. Uh, for the paint schemes and what color choices and things like that. And we give them the standard colors that we want, you know, to match the Wyotech red and black. But give us different themes. Do you want an eagle on the side? Do you want feathers going down? I mean, whatever the case may be. And then we'll just get a bunch of us together and we'll pick out the one we like the best, and that's the paint job it'll get. I love it. Love it. The opportunities, man. The opportunities to truly inspire. You well, know? yeah. I mean, we want the students involved. I mean, everything that's done on this chassis has been student work. That's awesome. We, we want their insight. We want them to feel like they're a part of something. And that's you know, so cool. At the end of the day, when this thing is, whether it be on social media or be on TV or people just touring through there, yeah. there's going to be a student that goes, hey, I welded that bracket on. Yeah. Or, hey, I was a part of this or a part of that. And, and that means a lot to them. It is. And it legitimizes them. You know, I mean, there is a, a, a confidence issue every student has to leave with when they see something so big. And then, like, with me, I had to go back to a town of 38 people, you know? <laughs> so it's like I felt like I had got to see giants in the industry that actually gave me uh, the confidence I needed to realize that we all put our pants on the same way. That's true. And no matter where you come from, you can come to Wyotech and leave with a future. Sure, absolutely.